What up, guys? It's Mr. Dan Tom Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, October 15th, 2019, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash entertainment report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Vietnam will not allow Abano to screen in its movie theaters because of the way a disputed territory is depicted on the map in the family film. Uh, Tai Guang Dong, Vietnam's Deputy Minister of Culture, Sports, and Tourism, says the license has been revoked for the co-production between Hollywood's DreamWorks Animation and the Chinese-owned Pearl Studio. Variety reported the film was banned because of the way a map shows contested nine-dash line territorial claims between China and Vietnam in the South China. The BBC says the movie debuted in Vietnamese cinemas on October 4th, but was removed from theaters after audience members posted screenshots of the controversial map on social media. Actor Jason Mewes says playing one half of the titular duo in the comedy Jane Silent Bomb reboot offered him some unexpected challenges. While Mewes has played fast-talking stoner Jay in most of Riot Director actor Kevin Smith's movies dating to 1994's Clerks, Jay and Silent Bomb reboot finds Jay discovering he has a teen daughter played by Smith's real-life offspring, Harley Quinn Smith. Mewes told UPI in a recent phone interview, I went in there thinking... We're just going to have some fun, snooching, boochies, and running around. But it actually was a little more work for me, a little more dialogue. Sharing scenes with Harley Quinn Smith made it easier for him to develop and reveal a more serious side to his iconic character. He says, I've known her since she was a baby and we've had a great relationship. She put a pretty good performance on when she is getting upset. And because she's getting upset, I would literally start really getting upset. I know she was pretending, but I had to go with it. It made it a lot simpler than I thought it would be. If I wasn't a real-life dad and Harley wasn't in that role, I don't think I would be able to pull it off. Set for theatrical release on Tuesday, Reboot is the sequel to 2001's Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. The new adventures follow Jay and Kevin Smith's Silent Bob, lifelong best friends as they road trip from New Jersey to California to quash the remake of Blunt Man and Chronic, a movie based on Jay and Silent Bob without permission. Along the way, they meet numerous people from their past, including Jay's ex-girlfriend, Justice, played by Shannon Elizabeth, and her wife, Reggie, played by Rosario Dawson, who's been raising Jay's smart and feisty daughter, Millennium uh, Millie Falcon. Zoe Kravitz has been cast as Catwoman in director Matt Reeves' upcoming The Batman. Kravitz will star opposite Robert Pattinson as Batman, who is cast in May, ta- taking over the DC Comics superhero role from Ben Affleck. Jeffrey Wright will also be featured as Batman's ally, Commissioner Gordon. Pre-production is scheduled to begin this summer with the Batman set for the- hit theaters on June 25, 2021. Reeves, best known for helming 2014's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and its 2017 sequel, War for the Planet of the Apes, is writing and directing the project. Kravitz, who recently appeared in HBO's Big Little Lies, voiced Catwoman in the 2017 animated film, The Lego Batman Movie. Catwoman, a thief and anti-hero who is also one of Batman's love interests, was last portrayed on the big screen by Anne Hathaway in 2012's The Dark Knight Rises. Michelle Pfeiffer was featured as the character in 1992's Batman Returns, and Halle Berry headlined a solo Catwoman movie in 2004. Amazon Prime released a trailer for season three of its Emmy-winning comedy, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, on Monday. Broadway legend Sutton Foster can be heard singing Perfect, Perfectly Marvelous from Cabaret in the background of the two-minute preview. The synopsis reads, Maish, played by Rachel Bershanahan, and Susie, played by Alice Borstein, discovered that life on tour with Shy, played by Leroy McLean, is glamorous but humbling, and they learn a lesson about show business they'll never forget. Joel, played by Michael Zegan, struggles to support Maj while pursuing his own dreams. A, played by Tony Shalhoub, embraces a new mission, and Rose, played by Marin Hinkle, learns she has talents of her own. The show is about a wealthy New York housewife who becomes a stand-up comedian in the late 1950s. Season 3 is set to stream December 6th. 
The Daily Show with Trevor Noah will air live Tuesday following the fourth Democratic presidential debate for the 2020 presidential election, Comedy Central announced. The live episode titled Vogasm 2020, The Field Narrows from 12 to from 10 to 12, will air at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Those guests will be Alex Wagner, co-host and executive producer of Showtime's The Circus and special correspondent for CBS News. It will mark the 15th time The Daily Show with Trevor Noah has aired live with the late night ho- talk show, have, having also covered the uh, previous 2020 Democratic debate and President Donald Trump's State of the Union address, among other political events. The debate is co-hosted by CNN and the New York Times. It will broadcast live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from the Otterbrin University in Westerville, Ohio. The 12 candidates who will appear on the, on the debate stage had to reach at least 2% in four Democratic National Committee approval points uh, and polls and received at least 130,000 unique donations by October 1st. The fifth round of the Democratic presidential debates will take place in Georgia on November 20th. It will be hosted by MSNBC and The Washington Post. Howard Stern remarried his wife, Beth Stern, on Monday on the Ellen DeGeneres show. DeGeneres set up an impromptu ceremony for the couple after Stern had reproposed to Beth during Wednesday's episode of Jimmy Kimmel Live. Bachelor alum Colton Underwood, who headlined season 23 of the dating series, officiated the wedding as the, as the Stearns are fans of the show. Underwood said he had been ordained for the occasion. Howard Stern sent at the altar before the couple said, I do, and shared a kiss. I vow to you, if you remarry me, I promise for the rest of my life to watch The Bachelor with you in bed every single night. The Stearns celebrated their 11th wedding anniversary on October 3rd. Bev Stern posted on Instagram to mark the anniversary. Best friend, rescue partner, love of my life. Uh, happy anniversary. I thank God for you every day. I think my smile has only gotten bigger over these years together. Questions from fans at San Diego Comic Con inspired the second season of the TV show The Purge, according to its stars and producer. The Purge series, which includes four movies, and the TV series was created by James DeMonico. Uh, executive producer Crystal Ziv told UPI DeMonico said that people have always asked him about the Minotaur, how it works, and what happens in between. He felt like TV would be the best place to explore that because he had 10 hours. In The Purge, all crime is legal for one night a year. The Purge's fictional political party, the new founding fathers of America, possess that giving Americans a chance to express their violence once a year creates peace during the rest of the year. Rollins says DeMonico wanted to explore how people actually cope. NBC News President Noah Opperheim denied on Monday claims made by journalist Ronan Farrow that appeared in his new book, Catch and Kill, Lies, Spies, and a Conspiracy to Protect Predators. The book, which mainly recounts Farrow's investigation of Harry Weinstein and set to be released on Tuesday, alleged that NBC knew about former Today anchor Matt Lauer's sexual misconduct before he was fired in November 2017. The book also states that Lauer may have played a role in an NBC ending Farrell's investigative piece on Weinstein that was later published in The New Yorker in October 2017. Oppenheim said in a memo to his staff in response, We have no secrets and nothing to hide. He continued, Now that we've read Farrell's book, it's clear his smear rests on the allegations and NBC's management knew about and took steps to hide Matt Lauer's misconduct before his firing in November of 2017. Without that, he has no basis of which to rest his second conspiracy theory, that his Harry Weinstein reporting was squashed to protect uh, Lauer. Farrow alleges there were employees who reported Lauer's behavior prior to November of 2017 and were paid settlements to silence them. Not only is this false, the so-called evidence Farrow uses in his book to support the charge collapsed under the slightest scrutiny. Farrow appeared on CBS this morning on Monday and responded to Oppenheim's uh, comments. Farrow says, look, this book is extraordinary, meticulously fact-checked work of investigative journalism. It's two years of reporting. I'll let the reporting in the book stands on its own. We're very confident in that. Lauer also recently denied claims in Farrow's book that he raped former NBC staff, new staff, Brooke Nettles, in the Soki Olympics in February 2014. Farrow had interviewed Nettles for his book, 
with Neville saying that Laura anally raped her. Laura says, in a new book, it is alleged that an extramarital but consensual sexual encounter, I have previously admitted, have it, was in fact an assault. It is uh, categorically false, ignoring the facts and defies common sense. In a rare break from tradition and going against its own rules, the 2019 Man Booker Prize was awarded money to two authors, Margaret Atwood and Bernadine Evaristo. Atwood's The Testaments and Evaristo's Girl, Woman, Other were selected from a short list of six books for the coveted prize in English literature and were chosen following the Tema of Process, the Booker Prize said in a statement. The award has only been shared twice before, in 1972 and 1992, and the rules were changed in 1993 to prevent the international recognition and the $63,000 in prize money being split between two authors. The Booker um, Prize Foundation said it found it impossible to pick one of them to be its winners. The Booker Prize Foundation Literary Director Gabby Wood said in a statement, on being told that it was definitely against the rules, the judges held a further discussion and chose to flout them. They left the judging room happy and proud, their twin winners gesturing towards the six they would have wanted had it been possible to split the prize any further. The Testament by Edward, the 79-year-old Canadian author, is a sequel to her acclaimed dystopian novel, The Handmaid's Tale. It picks up 15 years after the original story ended in the Republic of Gilead, on the theocratic regime that is showing signs to, of decay. The judges said in the statement, it is a savage and, not, and beautiful novel that speaks to us today in conviction and power. The bar is set unusually high for at which he soars. Girl, Woman, Other by Evaristo tells the contemporary story of 12 characters, most of whom are women, black and British, that is, celebratory and vibrant. The judges says it must read about modern Britain and womanhood. This is an impressive, fierce novel about the lives of black British families. Other breaks from tradition this year is that Evaristo is the first black woman to win the prize since it was founded in 1969. Now, what is, is only the fourth author to win the award twice? She was selected as the Booker Prize winner in 2000 for The Blind Assassin. Atwood and Evaristo were announced at this year's joint award winners Monday during a ceremony at Guildhall in London, England. A petition calling for a strong punishment of online harassers tied to the apparent suicide of a K-pop star has gathered more than 1,000 signatures at Seoul's presidential Blue House. Suli, a former member of the South Korean girl band FX, was found dead at her home Monday, had been the target of cyberbullying. She questioned the need for women to wear bras and opened up about her mental health issues, but was met with malicious comments online. On Tuesday, petitioners uh, posted an online statement to the presidential office of Moon Jae-in requesting the government take measures against individuals who bullied Suli, News 1 reported. The petition t- titled, uh, We Seek Strong Punishments for the Cyber Bullies Who Drove Celebrity Suli of FX to Suicide saying that cyberbullying is a recurring problem in Korea, where competition with peers at a young age has been cited as a source of mental health issues. Um, We've seen strong punishment for the cyberbully who drove Sully to death. Last year, Name With Health made a fatal choice while battling extreme depression. By 3.10 local time, 1,586 people have signed the petition. If the petition reaches 200,000 signatures, in 30 days, a Blue House official must respond within a month of, uh, to the activist. Cyberbullying has become common in South Korea and with the rise of social media. Harassers maintain their anonymity while typically targeting celebrities and other public figures. Law enforcement could be stepping up measures in the wake of Sully's death. Yon Hap reported Tuesday local police forward to the prosecution to defendants for defaming So Hee Hyo, one of Korea's top billed actresses. The individual uh, made unfound claims song was being sponsored or provided sexual services to a wealthy Chinese donor in return for compensation. The claims were made online while Song was undergoing divorce from Song Joon Ki in June. Whitney Houston, Dave Matthews Band, the Notorious B.I.G. and others have been nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Class of 2020, the organization announced on Tuesday. 
Judas Priest, The Patch Mode, The Doobie Brothers, Pat Benatar, Motorhead, Nine Inch Nails, Soundgarden, Thin Lizzy, Kraftwerk, MC5, Rufus featuring Chaka Khan, Ty Rugren, and T-Rex have also been nominated. The 2020 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony will take place at the Public Auditorium in Cleveland on May 2nd, 2020. More than 1,000 artists, historians, journalists, and music industry professionals will vote on which nominees will be nominated. Fans can vote up to five nominees a day through Google by searching Rock Hall Fan Vote. The top five artists will make up a fan ballot that will be tallied along with the other ballots. Fan voting ends on January 10th. Houston, Dave Matthews Band, The Notorious B.I.G., The Dewey Brothers, Motorhead, uh, Pat Benatar, Soundgarden, T-Rex, and Thin Lizzy join the nominees list for the first time. Nominees need to have their first signal or album released no later than 1984. Janet Jackson, Radiohead, Stevie Nicks, Def Leppard, The Cure, Roxy Music, and The Zombies were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in March. And as your entertainment report for Tuesday, October 15th, 2019, I'm your host, Mr. Dan Tamari Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.